Okay, um, my name's Cat B, and um, I've been a comedian, I guess, um, I think they would say all my life, because I've just been just doing me. That bit falls in the category of comedy, you know? Hey. But I'm professionally on the circuit for over 20-odd years. It's a long time. So, sorry, were you going to say something? I, I, I was going to say it depends. It's all relative. What's, what's time? <laughs> Fair enough. So how did you first get into stand-up comedy? What was kind of, what inspired you to do that? And then what was that like first entering? Um, I think like many things, um, you, you do stuff, if you can naturally do stuff and then it falls into the category of, oh, he's a comedian or he's a this, you just go, oh, okay. Um, comedy for me, um, I started at, Chats Palace, that was my first ever like going on and just saying, oh, I'm going to do jokes, I'm going to do stand up. Um, and for me, it's just like I was just being me, I was just talking and just having fun, and um, people were enjoying it. So um, I didn't go into it saying, Oh, I'm just going to be a comedian. I've been trained in the theatre and the arts at Stratford East, so. Um, it's always been something that you, you can either do, you sing, you dance, you tell a joke, you host, you do whatever. So, you know what I mean? You go and help build a set. You, you had that grounding from from very young of if you're in the theatre, even if it's making a cup of tea, you're, you're just doing something and learning at the same time. So um, I think it was just a natural progression and then it's just something that I, I can always just fall back on and do. Mm -hmm. So can you tell me a little bit more about your history with Stratford East? Um, I guess like so coming up through like the theater side of it and then also if you have any experience doing comedy there as well. Um, I started off at Stratford East as the, the young boy in the group. We didn't have anybody because everybody was in secondary school. I wasn't. So they could always use for character roles me as a character to do certain things um which for them was like yep yeah, that was quite comedic they'll say that was funny he did this and it was funny um and then um from there i went on to start teaching at stratford east um so because i'd been there for so many years it was like a natural progression they needed someone to take the workshops on particular days so then it was like did you do it okay cool so anything that I had already learned, I'm teaching as well. And then um, I was doing variety nights um, there and then also um, going up for roles in the shows at um, Stratford East. So it was something that I was always doing and then going to other places and performing um, and taking comedy everywhere. So I've literally performed all over the world, but it's just been what I've always known that makes sense so just to pick up on that a little bit when you talk about performing all over the world are there things that you have to consider um you know when putting together a set or uh thinking about the kind of jokes that you're going to tell when you're performing for different audiences like what goes through your head when you're um trying to figure out what's going to connect most with people um it, it varies it varies i mean even, um, more so now um We've got so many different fractions and comedy circuits. Um, and comedy is just relative to yourself and then mm -hmm. whoever can connect with you. You could you could be telling the most funniest joke on the planet, but then you'll also now in this day and age get people that would just, won't, they, they're not there to agree with you or to laugh or they just come with an agenda and try and throw curveballs in. Um, they used to be called hecklers, now they're just called all different names now, you know what I mean? It's like someone will come and just be, oh, you can't say that. Well, why not? 
oh, because you've offended me and I'm a fly. Oh, please, really, if you're a fly, then I'm so sorry. It's like, there's so many different things. I think when people, comedy is one of the, I think, art forms that people feel they know you or they feel that they can say anything they want to you. They wouldn't do it when it comes to a show, you know, a live theatre show. They wouldn't halfway through go, I don't, I don't like the way you sang that song. I, I object to that person standing that way or wearing that makeup. It's like, but for comedy, they feel that it's a weaker um, entity. It's until they, you know, challenge you and then you, you know, I mean, as the, the comic or as the host, you have to now challenge them back. Because I wouldn't really say it's attacking because I don't, anything anybody says, I wouldn't take as an attack. I just laugh at it because y you came to my workplace and decided to turn up and pay to be at my workplace and still have the hump. Makes no sense. You know what I mean? Especially if you know that's what they came there to do. That's all they've come there to do is either try and heckle or it's like, really? I'm somebody's child as well at the end of the day. Don't come and rock my boat. I don't come into your house and rock your boat. So stay in your lane. So when you, your, your question is, is a hard one. Um, people have got different material. Some comics I watch once, some comics I watch a hundred times, but you know, it's different strokes for different folks. And you don't, we, some comics go out there to offend. I don't really go out there to offend. I just go out there and just talk about life and things that I find funny. But if someone doesn't find it funny, I don't, let it trouble my mind. I don't go home going, oh, woe is me. They didn't find, I'm just like, whatever. You never gave birth to me. Do I care? I mean, if people enjoyed it, then I care about them. They got, you know, 10 minutes of, or 20 minutes or an hour of just being able to let go and forget their worries and just be happy. And in that moment, so I hope I answered that question for you. No, yeah, absolutely. I guess uh, to expand on that a little bit, are there, particular ways that you've seen like the comedy scene evolve like when you first started out I know you mentioned just like the difference in like how some people approach um coming to the show and being more like combative with the comedian but are there other things you've noticed um that have changed over time um what's the change of time yeah we've got there's there's it's easier to um be recognized now because we've got social media but then I don't really do that much social media in the sense of comedy, if that makes sense, because you can be funny on screen for the 30 seconds, but can you be funny live? So there's that comparison where some people are so tuned into you on the screen, when they see you live, it's harder for them to engage with you and tune in because they're not used to it, because they're only used to 30 seconds, 45 seconds of short spurts. So what they find funny in the 45 seconds or the one minute if you've got, you know, if you paid extra for your account to be able to advertise longer, you know what I mean? You've got, a re they most probably sat there, rehearsed it for however long and then tried to make it look natural. So then when it comes to doing it on the stage, people are going, mm, mm, not as, so I don't really post too many things on me doing stuff. I wait for you to come and see the show because then it's how comedy should be it's organic no one's doing you know say wicked or the whiz on instagram as short spurts and then expecting you to watch the show and go oh yeah it's just as great it, it won't be the same thing no yeah that's a really good point um yeah because theater is you know has a staying power as far as you know, people continue to go and watch shows even though it seems like in some ways it's very a traditional form of media and doesn't necessarily lend itself so much to um I know there's more of a push for streaming but you know it's it's not something you're going to find on TikTok necessarily no, no. um the, like you said TikTok I mean TikTok's quite quite new and then most probably now we said TikTok there's another 10 that are taking off that but just as you know I mean I mean got we got book face um Back in the day, it was MySpace. I mean, everyone jumped onto MySpace and invested so much in MySpace. And then Bookface came out, and people that had MySpace account were going, But I've just spent how long trying to get. <sighs> I mean, it's a, it, it's, it's, a, it's a planet that is evolving and changing so much. 
and a lot of comedians and film stars they're on the social media because it feels like that's the only way to stay relevant they have to keep advertising themselves and it's like there's only so many hours in the day you know what i mean if, if i mean i like watching the instagrams and stuff because i like watching food i like watching woodwork so for me it's like oh wow but i don't sit there watching all these comics because it would turn me mad you know what i mean if it's anything negative i'm like no but social media is now almost you have to validate yourself and if you can't validate yourself and convince me that you're validating yourself you're not really that good and it's it's almost you have to feel like you're advertising yourself all the time it's taken away from tv and stuff where tv had advertising for your soap commercials and stuff like that now they're all on social media as well and you go wow the world's changing it was smoke signals to tell people one thing then it was drums and now it's social media Yeah, and I'm I'm wondering too for you if you've seen anything that's different as far as like comedians that are starting to like come up nowadays. Um, a lot of them, like the ones that do come up with social media, do you feel like they approach comedy from a different um, perspective? Are there any changes that you've noticed um, just like meeting people who are maybe younger or newer? Um, yes, they will. They will. They will definitely um, have a different view because it's a different time. So they're, and everything's more quick. It's quick, quick, quick. I'm from a school and an elk that is from a grassroots level of working and grafting. We didn't have social media. You know what I mean? It was literally, you know what I mean? You look forward to Saturday and go into your drama class. You know what I mean? I remember it was then just a drama class. Now, it's like so much more bigger than that because you've got your drama classes and you've got your drama performing arts classes which is all singing all dancing all all everything then it's your your performing arts classes that have stunt work and so it's just grown and grown and grown um and it's more accessible now than it was then if you want to know about a drama class in germany or there's a likewise street dance crew in germany that does this or in scandinavia you can just go and find it straight away where before you had to travel for months and by word of mouth and hear things and by the time it gets back to you but now if things so quick because it is so quick and people are so <laughs> comedy is going to be completely different because you're coming from a completely different set and what i might say to some people will only fit a certain demographic and where some of the new comics that are coming up their comedy would only hit a certain demographic because is what you're tuned into you know what i mean and some some people like speed and some people like you know needs to be more some people like yes we here and now and then some people like to build stuff so it's 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 all relative to i think the comedians and it's the arts and at the end of the day they found a new the newer com comics now they found a new way of doing comedy and a new way of accessing their audience so you can't knock it you can just only go cool and just keep watching the arts grow yeah no that's yeah it's a lot to think about mm -hmm. um but very interesting perspective um i wanted to ask really fast um how do you feel like your like where you grew up in your background i know you've mentioned theater a lot how do you feel like that has influenced or um like how do you bring that into your comedy um I think it's it's a the way I was doing stuff. It's given me a different kind of grounding and a different respect to turning up to the stage or to any venue to do comedy. You know what I mean? Um, I'm 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 quite meticulous with you know making sure you're on time, making sure that you know you're you're warmed up and ready. You know what I mean? Not just oh, I'm turning up and oh my gosh I'm I'm late and I've got to go on now. It's like everything is a because we're not I'm not from the school of this quick and do that quick and did it i'm still from that school of leave by a certain time get to you know birmingham manchester wherever and be in that town ready to start work when you're supposed to start work not oh my train was delayed or um there was traffic on the road or there was i'm we're not from that school of of thought so my delivery of comedy would be completely different because it's not it's very very 
placed and you know and I'm not saying that some of the new comics are not placed but they're they're coming from a different headspace you know I mean their their grounding has only started recently mine started at the age of eight nine so you know I mean telling someone to go say digging for diamonds back in the day and now telling someone to dig for diamonds today is a completely different work ethic. You know I mean, you, you're using a completely different set of tools. Um, you're not using dynamite. You're not using laser cutters. You know, I mean, you're using your hands, your head, and working out that problem. And that's what we do as comics. The ones that have been doing it from however long you've got, you've got um, more life experience. Um, and it's in all work, works of life. You know, what I mean, some comics that are just starting now, they don't have that life experience. As much as they could be funny, they don't have that life experience. So when certain curveballs come, then they weren't ready for it because they haven't had the life experience. I mean, there's loads of people got PhD and and they've got masters and da da da, but it doesn't mean jack diddly squat if you haven't got life experience. Because there'd be someone that's done the same job as you over how many years, but they can empathize with a patient or with a new client that's coming into the their, their workspace where someone that's all they've done is done books and done things in a structured form they can't actually engage with people because you haven't got the life experience of actually doing that and with com comedy it it's one of those things that you can't go and study it and be a master of it in three years because you've just looked at it You've got to actually live it. You've got to have good days. You've got to have bad days. You've got to have shows where there's four people in the audience and still make, because some comics, oh, there's only, oh, oh, how many people's in, I don't care. If that one person's come, then I'm going to make that one person smile and laugh. I'm not going to be kind of, oh, there's only one person there. Because then it's not that one person's fault. And when I go and do a comedy show, if it's eight o'clock start, I'm on stage to start at that time. I'm not waiting until 15 minutes later or 20 minutes later because, you know, there's not many people. So we're just waiting. I don't care. Let me go on because the people that paid their money, I've got to still give them that respect and due diligence of saying, here I am. I've done me. Thank you very much. Good night. If people come late. You're not dictating how the rest of the show goes on. You're not dictating how other people should feel. And it's always making sure, as the artist, that you're always willing to put your integrity first and say, look, this is me and this is what I want to do. And then if, if it goes wrong, you learn from it, not blame it on everybody else. And go, oh. There wasn't, it's like, yes, you're going to have bad days where the audience are not receptive, but then why is that? And you mustn't take it on yourself and say, oh, it, it was because this, this, and that. If if you did well, you did well. If they didn't receive it, then just move on from that and grow. Are there any experiences that you've had, like with particular shows, that have been moments like that for you, where you've been like, "Oh, like this really didn't connect the way that I wanted it to," or something was off here? Sometimes you have yeah off shows, and sometimes you 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 do your your thing and come off and you think right mm. but then that comes you learn with experience that not all audiences are gonna laugh in the same way as the audience before and some audiences are listening audiences they they listen they go because everybody's different you've got kinesthetic learners audio learners visual learners you know what i mean so the odds on getting 250 kinesthetic people in the room is just like very, very hard. So if you get a load of kinesthetic people in and they're killing themselves with laughter, then you're, you're cool. You've got a load of visual people. They're, they're happy. You know, you've got some audio people, they listen. So they might not engage with the laughter as much because they need to listen and take in what you're saying and then go, because they're waiting for more information. And that's the same within school. 
you have so many different learning styles and learning skills that someone like me, I'm a kinesthetic, I'm, a, I'm dyslexic, it's like I would take in information differently to someone that's an audio learner. Now they might climb in the class to the teacher because they're that person that can go, yes, and hear something and copy it and do it straight away. I have to do it first and then produce the work. So an audience is completely different. You've always got to remember that they're different all the time. Some of them will be there laughing. Some of them laugh inside. Some of them laugh out loud. You know, Some people will be laughing. It doesn't mean that you're funny. They're just laughing because they just like being that person in the crowd that people look at. So there's always levels to it. You just got to know when you go on there, do the best you can do, do the best, you know, performance that you can possibly give at that given time. And then just sit back from it and go, okay. I mean, I've done shows, weddings, everywhere to perform. And everyone's different. And you've always got to tailor your audience because you might have children there. So you've got to make sure that some of the jokes you say, there's nothing that makes the child go, oh. and the parents go, oh my God. I mean, where there's some comics that you put them on and that's all they can do. They can't change form. They can't flow differently. It is, this is what I've rehearsed and this is what you're going to get. And if you don't laugh at this section, then um, I'm going to get confused and thrown because you didn't laugh when I thought you was going to laugh. Me, I like to just flow do whatever and then you know if it if if i feel afterwards hmm that was a bit you know what i mean you go home and you go hmm but then you get messages in your inbox you were brilliant thank you it was so much fun oh you enjoyed it? yeah yeah we were just listening you go oh okay so sometimes you just got to go do you in whatever job it is comedy version whatever it is do you the best version of you at that time and then you have to sit back from it yeah. I want to switch gears a little bit and kind of focus more on the, the community aspect of it. So I guess uh, as a first question on on this section, were there comedian sorry, <laughs> were there comedians <laughs> that inspired you when you were first starting out or people that you looked to of like, oh, I wish I could tell jokes like that guy? Um when growing up, I mean I was it's comics that I've gone and look back on because I like their comedic style but um, I never went I'm gonna I want to be like somebody I just always wanted to just do me um, like you know Norman Wisdom um, Will Hay um, Bob Monkhouse I liked their style of delivering comedy um, Bruce Forsyth I like that style of del you know delivering things because it was very boom and or it was subtle stuff that you go oh you know what I mean um, I never really watched comedy per se growing up because I never said I want to be a comedian I just wanted to be a good performer so I like to dance I like to to sing I like to do stuff so when I do my comedy now I can fall back on everything that I've learned over the years so I never really looked at anybody I had had good mentors that helped me like Eddie Nesta, Robbie G, um, Felix Dexter, um, Angela Marr, you know, Slim, Richard Blackwood, all these different, Quincy, um, Kevin J. I've got all the time I'm always learning. I've got all these different comics that are always throwing their energy into me and nurturing and going, you could do this, you can do that. But also I've got great actors like, you know, Damon Hart, Ricky Norwood, um, Rudolph Walker, um, Donna Carroll, oh gosh, who else is there? It's like, you know, so many different actors that have poured them, them themselves as well naturally into going, hmm, have you thought about doing it this way? Have you thought about that? And you go, well, and it don't matter what age they are, they could be older, they could be younger. I, I, I like learning and I like to take information in and then whatever I do with it, I, I do. And whatever I don't want to do, I throw it out. You know what I mean? So it's it's I've done so many different things. So as a a comic, I wouldn't just say I'm a comedian. I'm an I've, I would say I'm an entertainer because I'm not confined to a box. I've never been confined to a box, and it's just that I'm having this interview because people know 
of the comedic side of what I do. I do comedy, but I, I work in schools sometimes. I go to prisons and prus, and I'm not going to be doing comedy there, but I can use the life experience of going to places like that and connecting with people because I'm an empath, and I can actually, you know, look at somebody, take that energy and go, okay, and then send it back or reciprocate it. So for me, I, I'm going to be in a, a box that's completely different to all the other comedians out there because you know some of them will say god he's a legend in the game and then some of them will go yeah 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 he, he's just started doing this thing and it's like people be going bro are you dip on something so some people won't know me for anything some people will and um now doing this interview some people will learn a new side of me because i just like doing normal stuff you know i mean i eat breathe and um get rid of waste because I'm not sure if we're allowed to say the other word you know what I mean like anybody else you see but um I like baking I like doing woodwork and that's all the things that keep me sane you know some you get some comics that they I think they just crave the attention and the adoration so much where I don't really care I'm if four people in that whole audience smiled and laughed and forgot their worries about life and you know I mean troubles and problems just for that split second I've done my job and I've always said if it finishes tomorrow I've had a good innings I've seen things around the world that most people would never ever see again and I'm like happy for that yeah I guess it sounds like you draw inspiration from a lot of different places and use that to create something that's really unique to you mm -hmm. um you mentioned Quincy and he's actually one of our um like he's working with us on, on the project. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about working with him and um, what that, that's been like. Yeah, he's a troublemaker. He's a troublemaker. He's, he's, a, he's an activist for comedians. He's, um, he's, um, he's a problem. He's a, he's a problem. He's not writing. And I love him for that. You know, he's, um, he's, he's um, the comedian's comedian, uh, I think, at the end of the day. I, like, I always like working with him um, from day one because... Um, He's just naturally him. He's just him. He's not doing anything else apart from just doing him and being him. Um, there's no airs and graces, even though he's very nice and polite. But he's 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 a he's a good guy, and um, I've always got time for Quincy. So if Quincy ever says, you know, you know, yeah, yeah, cat, I'm like, yes, Quincy. What would you like? You know what I mean, he always, even if you're tired, and you don't want to do something. He convinces you it's a good look. Come on, let's let's try and do this. In fact. Okay, and I've always got time for people that have got that energy that want to do stuff. I don't like dead energy. I hate dead energy. You know, you've done 10 shows and oh, I'm really tired. I hate them kind of comics that it's all about them. Get out of the room. Don't come in a dressing room ever and say you're tired because I'm not from that. I'm not from that world of, oh, woe is me. If you're tired, keep it internal and don't share that transference of negative energy. Whenever I see Quincy... As much as I know, sometimes he's like, oh. he still goes, like that. You know what I mean? And that's what you want. You don't want, you know what I mean, dead energy comedians, you know what I mean, doing strippiness. You want people like Quincy that are, comedy is not just in a box, you know what I mean? He's now going, like, how can I make it do this? How can I take comedy into this realm? He's always trying to, you know what I mean? And that's what the arts do. The arts isn't supposed to stay in boxes. The arts are supposed to, intermingle, change, mold, take a new form and do stuff. So the answers I'm going to give will most probably be like, what is he talking about to some people? But people that are in that thing and in tune will know, okay, I understand. You know what I mean? Those that only know one type of comedy and not physical comedy or not visual comedy and not, you know what I mean? They're mm -hmm. going to be like, mm hmm for those that are used to only jokes being like, you know, a 30 second skit, but it's not really taking you on a journey. It's just really did it and then you laugh. They're not going to understand because their brain isn't trained that way to take in information. You know what I mean, everything's very quick now. We had to wait before. We had to wait till that film came out. Now you can get it like that on Netflix. And if you want to get it even quicker, you can get it from some site that only few of your friends know about. They go, yeah, you can quit, watch this, it's really, it's really good. And so you'll see it like two months before everybody else. With comedy, 
you have to be there, you have to be in the moment, you have to be within the space. And Quincy's that guy that is always trying to create new spaces, you know what I mean? And take it to, to different levels and how can you make it happen here? How can I inter interact with this type of audience? And how do I get a new comic in as well as have a seasoned comic in the same space that complement each other? He's always thinking, which, you know what I mean? Some people just do stuff for the sake of doing it. He actually loves the actual art form of it all, which is a blessing. But don't tell him I said that. <laughs> I, I think he's going to find out. But, um, I won't tell him. Cool. Um, yeah, just to shift gears a little bit, um, since our our project is kind of looking at like the comedy scene in Stratford, because I was wondering if you think there's anything distinctive about um, you know performing comedy or the comedy scene in Stratford and Newham that's maybe different from other places you've performed? Um, each place is going to be different, you know, like, you know, Stratford has got a lot of history. Um, Hackney's got a lot of history. Um, West London's got a lot of history, like Hammers River. So there's so many places that I've performed at. All of them have history. And, I mean, I, I, was, I grew up in Stratford to a certain point, so being in Newham, I've watched it change, you know what I mean, over the years, the people, the, 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 the housing, you know what I mean, the roads, you know what I mean, you go away on a tour, come back and you find that you can't go down that road anymore, because it's a one way, and you're like, mum, I'm, I'm home, I think, but I, I, it says I can't drive down this, you know, you have to go around there and up here and then come back on yourself, and, Okay, I'll see you in 20 minutes then. It's like, and that's, Stratford is, is, is always developing and changing. And it, I think that's how things are always going to be. Things are always going to keep changing. And um, with that, the arts has to change as well. You know what I mean? Comedy world has to change because we have to keep up with the ever-changing things of what's happening in Stratford and Newham and keep it relative to people from Newham so they can go, oh, you're talking about us, oh, you know what I mean? And it's nice to go back to, you know, to Stratford and perform um, in the town hall or even in the theatre or even um, circus or even the cinema when they put on stuff and they say, oh, you've got ties to Newham and you go, mm hmm would you like to come back and perform here for a festival for this? And you're like, I've made it. But people say, can you come and perform at something because you have a tie with the past? That's like, you made it in your head. You're going, I made it. When am I ever going to get that kind of, we recognise something you did then, so can you come and do something now? Like, oh, you know what I mean? It's like, mind-blowing. You know what I mean? Knowing that, you know, there's certain people that perform there as well, and now you're performing there. You know what I mean? When they, the same with, Hackney, I performed there for how many years, and now they put me in the Hall of Fame. For me, a man of colour, being immortified in their history books, it's like... <sighs> so when I got the phone call about would I do the interview with yourself, it's like, yeah, you know what I mean? Because doing this interview, <sighs> I've made it. You know what I mean? It's for me like, yeah, it's like a dream come true. I don't have many awards, but... I know that I've made history and doing this interview, thank you. It's been awesome because, you know, I mean, Newham, growing up in Newham, you know, I mean, I was that child with the mashup trainers and the scruffy knee, just trying to work out what I wanted to do in life, what, what, what I wanted to do, you know what I mean? And I'd be singing and dancing and dancing in the street and doing all sorts. And they go, yeah. Voice he is, he's not right, it is, he's not right, but he likes performing. And then I went, I could do this as a, I could do this as a job. I'm sure I could do this as a job. You know I mean, I went on to have literally one of the most successful dance companies in East London. And one of my students went on to choreograph the Olympics. How many people can say that they taught people in such a way that they've gone on to do great things so I've not kept my wisdom to myself and you know they're all new and based as well which is like <sighs> awesome as well so it's like yeah it's 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 
Newham is like anywhere, any town that you grew up in. It's always good to go back there and say, "Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm giving back," and to the community and showing somebody else that you can do that as well. Because I was once that child looking, going, "Hmm," and say, "I could do this. I know I could do this." And now I've done it. I want another person and another person and another person to see and say, "I can do this too. It's not impossible." Yeah, that's. I mean, it's really touching to hear you talk about it that way. And, um, you know, talking about like coming back to the community and feeling like you've made it, I think it's, I, don't know, I found it particularly heartwarming, so. Thank you. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm on this national tour for comedy and I'm on an Asian comedy tour as well. Mm -hmm. It's really weird that I'm headlining on an Asian comedy circuit and they said, you're going to Ilford in New York. And, and well, no, yeah, Ilford. And I know Ilford is East London. I was like, that's home. That's still home. And I was like, raw. And the amount of people that was there in that venue, I was like, this is nuts. And they will come to see me. They went, we're proud of you. And I'm like, oh, wow. You know what I mean? That's just like, you, you've got me there. Um, and I know they've got something at Stratford soon, some comedy shows that they're doing on the comedy nights. So hopefully I'm going to be getting on that and tearing them a new bottom um, up at Stratford East. But it's like when you get to come back to an area that you've left and you're coming back to perform for them and then there's spaces that you just go, wow, you're here to see me because you know I was originally here and I've gone and come back. That's just like what you see on Netflix when you see all those Americans going, I'm back in my hometown. And they all go, ah! that's what it's like when you come back to Newham, you know what I mean? And perform for them and you go, thank you. And they're like, yeah, because it's like a time walk. Some people haven't changed. They've not done anything. They're still the same. They've not left their postcode. You know what I mean? Some of them, and I try and encourage people. I say, look, I've seen the world and there's nothing stopping you from going out of your borough and seeing another borough going to the seaside, you know what I mean? Get out there, see things, experience things, and just like let your mind grow some more and not just keep being bogged down by just life. You know what I mean? And just coming back to Newham to perform, for me, is just like the icing on the cake. It's like, come on, get in there. I've not stayed where some of you wanted to stay and not do anything with your life. I've gone on and follow my heart and dreams. And my heart and dreams have brought me all the way back to perform for user again how many years later. Let me tell you my journey of what I've seen in the world. Yeah, that's, it's really cool. Um, and it sounds like a really nice experience to be able to come back and see your community and you know bring your, your performance back to them in that way. Yeah. Um, I know we're kind of, uh, getting close to time here so um we'll try not to keep you too long i guess um one of the, a couple of things one thank you so much for doing this it's no, been you. really thank lovely you. talking to you Sorry that I couldn't um, keep the other day i tried and it was just a madness and everything was just like i was like oh my gosh oh my gosh so thank you for just you know being patient with me and um and and having me to, to for this interview and I'm recognizing, so I'm letting the audience also that watching know I couldn't make it for the interview, but they still had time for me and I have time for them. So there. <laughs>